I think we have seen an amazing boom in the adoption of uh, personal electronic devices over the last decade. That success of making billions of people use technology also kind of came at the expense of hurting the environment. The world produces about 50 million tons of e-waste every year. Humanity is contaminating things that are not easily replaceable in our planet. This is really a serious issue and we have to deal with it. I'm Mohammed El Fatatri. I'm the founder of Earth. Earth is an on-demand electronic waste recycling service which handles e-waste in an environmentally friendly way. I used to work in many NGOs before I started this uh, project and I found that uh, waste management is really a huge problem, especially e-waste. A lot of people don't know that it is really, really harmful to throw the electronics in the regular trash. It dumps all of that contaminated stuff all mixed together in the landfill. All the large-scale recovery plants say the last mile logistics to collect small amounts of e-waste from millions of consumers and businesses is so complicated and expensive. This is completely inefficient and we need a better way. In Malaysia, there are millions of people who drive cars. So we have thousands of those freelance heroes. We, on the other hand, receive the pickup requests from the customers. Our system matches the nearest driver to the order. Hello. Hi, Miss Lisa. Okay, so we come up. Huh? Normally, I would help out more after office hours. Hi, I'm here Hi. to collect your EWAs. Yes. All right. Right, and I believe that it is my duty and also I employ everybody also to take up this responsibility. It's our gift to the next generation. Once we serve a customer, we take all the e-waste that they have, we pay them a good cash reward. Uh, the revenue is generated from the recycling and that's why you get more and more people interested in recycling. Freelance drivers are able to keep the e-waste with them and then at the end of the week after collecting many orders, they basically come and bring it to our central warehouse. Two days ago, um, we received this batch of laptops from a company and we will wipe the data and send it to recovery on the next time. Once it reaches our central warehouse, our recovery partner actually sends their truck to our warehouse to collect all the items and bring it directly for dismantling segregation. Earth has so far uh, collected more than 15 tons of e-waste, but still, the, the, the challenge ahead of us is really, really large. Yeah. To be honest, we faced a very big hardship at the yes. beginning of uh, starting this project. Uh, actually, the e-waste business is, is not new in Malaysia, but the concept of e-waste recycling is new to the public. So when we were collecting our first ton, we didn't have a hero network, we didn't have a brand, nobody knew about us, and we were basically visiting you know, random events, random shops, talking to people that we meet on the street. It was then when we realized to solve the problem, we have to work on increasing people's awareness of e-waste. When I heard about the uh, Alipay NUS Social Innovation Challenge, I think the best thing that we can have at the moment is trying to get together with our partners and get together our minds just to see how we can scale the collection of electronic waste and recycling of electronic waste. Now we're open our technology and uh, we're willing to sharing what we have experienced. When we were at Alipay NUS Challenge, we heard about the, the product called Ant Forest. That product was being used by hundreds of millions of people and it already uh, resulted in the physical planting of more than 100 million trees. This is the kind of scale that gets me excited. Participating in this challenge inspired me in different ways, especially on the importance of spreading and advocating environmental education. You want to know what happens with e-waste at the end of it when it's recycled? It's extremely important to educate the students. Oh my God. <laughs> Once they recognize that this is the thing that they should do, I think that as they grow older, 
they will also keep this same philosophy or belief and then instill it in their own uh, families and, and their own communities. This laptop is 11 years older than you. Uh, <laughs> no, he considers himself as a, a reason to make the world a better place. And actually, when I ask him, Mo, can you please take some rest? Usually he says, no, I will never stop until this problem stops. I believe that we create something with a social impact. Of course, I know that we cannot change the whole planet, but we can make a change, a real change, and start to change this planet we live in.